Hello, Western enthusiasts and TV history buffs. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a special, then and now, episode, focusing on the iconic 1950s Western series, Cimarron City. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more fascinating looks at classic TV shows and their stars. Let's saddle up and ride into the past and present of the Cimarron City cast. 1. George Montgomery, born on August 29, 1916, in Brady, Montana, stepped into the world of Hollywood and left an indelible mark with his charismatic presence and versatility. Known most prominently for his portrayal of Matthew Rockford in the 1950s Western series, Cimarron City, Montgomery's journey in the film industry was as adventurous and diverse as the roles he played. He passed away on December 12, 2000, at the age of 84, but not before leaving a legacy that continues to resonate with fans of classic cinema and television. Montgomery's story is one of humble beginnings and aspirational heights. He grew up in a large family, where the rugged outdoors of Montana shaped his early years, instilling in him the qualities that would later define his onscreen personas. Driven by a passion for acting, he made his way to Hollywood, initially finding work as a stuntman before his handsome looks and natural acting talent caught the attention of studio executives. His breakthrough came in the late 1930s, and he quickly became a staple in westerns and action films. Montgomery's tall, athletic build, coupled with a rugged handsomeness, made him a natural for the genre. During the 1940s and 1950s, he starred in numerous films, earning acclaim for his performances in movies like Ten Gentlemen from West Point and Riders of the Purple Sage. But it wasn't just his onscreen work that made Montgomery a notable figure in Hollywood. He was also a skilled craftsman and artist, renowned for his woodworking and furniture-making skills. This creative side added depth to his personality, distinguishing him from his contemporaries. Montgomery's role as Matthew Rockford in Cimarron City stands out as a highlight in his career. As the son of the town's founder, he brought a blend of strength, integrity, and complexity to the character, capturing the essence of the American frontier spirit. The show, despite its brief run, remains a significant part of his legacy. Throughout his career, Montgomery didn't chase after awards. Instead, he focused on delivering earnest performances. His impact was more about the lasting impression he left on his audience than about accolades and trophies. In his later years, Montgomery continued to act occasionally but devoted more time to his art and personal life. His passing in December 2000 was attributed to heart failure. George Montgomery's life story, much like the westerns he starred in, is a tale of perseverance, artistry, and a lasting impact on the canvas of American entertainment. Second John Smith as Lane Temple. In the annals of classic western television, John Smith stands tall, a name synonymous with rugged charm and an understated intensity. Born Robert Errol Van Orden on March 6, 1931, in Los Angeles, California, Smith's journey in Hollywood was a testament to the golden era of westerns. His most celebrated role came as Lane Temple, the deputy sheriff in Cimarron City, a part that etched him in the hearts of western aficionados. Smith's life, marked by the glitz of showbiz and the quietude of personal life, came to a close on January 25, 1995, when he was just 63 years old. Smith's foray into acting was almost serendipitous. Initially aiming for a career in law, his striking looks and natural acting ability steered him towards Hollywood. He began with minor roles, gradually climbing the ranks of the industry. His breakthrough came with Cimarron City, where he embodied the steadfast, law-abiding Lane Temple, capturing the essence of the Western hero. Smith's career soared with his portrayal of Slim Sherman in Laramie, another Western series that further cemented his place in the genre. He became a household name, his performances marked by a blend of toughness and sensitivity that resonated with viewers. Despite his success on screen, Smith remained a private person, often shying away from the Hollywood spotlight. He was more than just a TV actor. He was a musician, a painter, and a poet, showcasing his multifaceted talents beyond the confines of the studio lots. Sadly, Smith's life was cut short due to cirrhosis and heart problems, a quiet end to a life that had once been filled with the clamor of fame. His legacy, however, lives on through the timeless westerns that continue to captivate audiences. 3. Audrey Totter as Beth Purcell. Audrey Totter's journey in Hollywood is a story of versatility and resilience. 
Born on December 20, 1917, in Joliet, Illinois, Totter carved a niche for herself in the realm of film noir before venturing into television. Her role as Beth Purcell in Cimarron City showcased her ability to bring depth and complexity to her characters. Totter's remarkable career spanned several decades, culminating in a life rich with cinematic contributions, until her passing on December 12, 2013, at the age of 95. Totter's entry into the entertainment world was marked by radio performances. She soon transitioned to film, where she found considerable success in the 1940s, particularly in film noir. Her performances in movies like, Lady in the Lake, and, The Setup, were critically acclaimed, showcasing her as the quintessential femme fatale. In, Cimarron City, Totter brought a nuanced performance as Beth Purcell, adding a layer of strong, independent femininity to the male-dominated Western genre. Her portrayal was a testament to her range as an actress, comfortably shifting from the dark, brooding atmosphere of noir to the open, rugged landscapes of Westerns. Throughout her career, Totter received recognition for her work, although she was often more praised for her acting prowess than her award tally. She was a trailblazer for women in genres traditionally dominated by men, breaking stereotypes with her strong screen presence. In her later years, Totter devoted herself to family and occasional television appearances. Her death, resulting from a stroke, marked the end of an era for classic film and television enthusiasts. Audrey Totter's legacy in Hollywood is a blend of noir mystery and Western resilience, a tribute to her diverse talents and enduring impact on the silver screen. Well, folks, that wraps up our journey through the captivating world of Cimarron City and its unforgettable cast. We hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane as much as we did. Drop your thoughts and stories in the comment section below. Your insights and memories are what make this community so special and vibrant. Let's keep the conversation going. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button and share this video with fellow Western fans and classic TV enthusiasts. Sharing not only supports our channel but also keeps the legacy of shows like Cimarron City alive and well in the hearts of new audiences. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss out on our nostalgic journeys through television history. Every subscription helps us bring more content like this to you. We've got plenty more, then and now, episodes in the pipeline, exploring the lives and careers of stars from your favorite classic shows. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep the spirit of classic TV alive. Until next time, keep those comments coming, and happy viewing.